I do feel that nationwide there's a kind of ebbing of the tide. And you know, it's a little bit intangible, a little bit hard to point to, but I am gonna to point to some things, but I feel the fever has kind of broken, both locally and nationally. And I'm gonna give you some examples. Um, I thought the GOP primaries were extraordinary. Um, Pancredo dropped out before a single vote was cast because he knew he was only gonna get two or three percent of the vote. You know, he and Duncan Hunter dominated the debates, but they did not show at all in any races. More important than that, Huckabee and Romney, who were convinced they were going to ride to victory on this, you know, it, it didn't work. I mean, it, it, this is the, you know, I say to this, I've been saying this to reporters for years, you know, it fools gold, it doesn't work. Candidates don't know that and they try. And literally, you know, this was going to be the gay marriage of this cycle. Republicans were going to vote on it. Huckabee or Romney were going to ride to victory and, you know, look where they are. And the guy who we were all sure had no chance because of his stance on elections going to be the nominee. And not only that, but when you look at the polling, and you know, I can, I can go into depth on the exit polling, I'll try to restrain myself, 60% um, of actual Republicans who voted in primaries, this is not like woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, somebody's telephone poll, this is people who actually came out to vote, 60% of them are for something that other Republicans call amnesty. They're either for a path to citizenship or, or, or worker permits. Now we can say worker permits aren't good enough, but that's 60% of Republicans, that's pretty impressive. And you know, ultimately the good news is that public opinion hasn't really changed. And public opinion is not as bad as it looks. You know, if you were a Martian and you landed in, the, in, in America, you would say Lou Dobbs is king on this issue. Well, Lou Dobbs is not king on this issue. Polling continues to show that it's 20 to 25 percent of the public only with Lou Dobbs. I mean, that's not a majority. It's not 80 percent of the public. It's 20 to 25 percent only. They're very active. They're very loud. They're very noisy. But they're only 20 to 25 percent of the public. And they didn't even determine the Republican primaries. Um, I think it's ultimately about changing the math, electoral math, on both the Republican and the Democratic side. You know, what we had last time was a bunch of people in Washington, Democrats, Republicans, President Senator Kennedy, you know, who were for it, and a lot of us. And we had people marching in the street, but we didn't have voters who really could, could, could um, you know, bring to pressure to bear on elected officials. And, you know, if I have to go to another meeting with a member of Congress where they say, I get it, you know, I have, and you name it, you know, resorts or agriculture or construction boom in my district. I know we need the workers, but I can't vote for it until the people out there telling me to vote for it. I mean, elected officials don't do it for fun or because they think it's right. They do it because voters want it. And it's about the Latino vote, and I believe it's also about a business constituency. You know, for one of a better phrase, you know, white people who can vote. Um, and so I think, you know, on both sides of the aisle, we have to be about changing the math. What I believe is that um, America's history with immigration is actually twofold. It has two competing forces, uh, which we are seeing played out now. And that is, who gets to be an American? Who gets to be an American? Are you good enough to be an American? And that's where the hate. And the second is the economic. The thirst for the labor, uh, cheap labor. And so when you look at our immigration policy, it's those two things constantly fighting. Part of the... <laughs> Part of the challenge is that the Hispanic community, as you all know in the United States, is so diverse, uh, both in its ethnicity, its class, its levels of education, um, and that there aren't you know, national leaders that can really articulate um, the kind of agenda I'm speaking. It only happens at sort of a community-based level, and that requires a different kind of organizing than I think many of our political leaders are, are used to. But um, there is a real effort among activists to really use this election to show Latino voters can, in fact, influence uh, the election of the president and Congress, and hope by that hope to um, put pressure on the incoming president to do something. Basically, domestic policies in the U.S., fiscal issues, health issues, education issues, which are done for domestic purposes, which are, which are affecting Mexicans in the U.S., and therefore they affect in Mexico directly. And it's fascinating to observe how those Mexicans, increasing Mexican community in the U.S., 13, 14 million people, 
who were born in Mexico who now live in the US, asking Mexico for services, and asking Mexico for, 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 for protection. And, uh, and it's interesting because this is really changing uh, the role of, uh, and the concept of Mexican diplomacy in the US. Now diplomacy is about helping Mexicans there in, for example, I mean, how to get education there in the US, uh, how to get health services in the US. It's not about anything else with doing that. It was really fascinating. We have a, a wonderful discussion coming back with President Calderon. I, I believe he really understands this new nature of US-Mexican relations, and it's fascinating what is happening there. You, you, you have a reaction. Well, we both have, have a reaction. both agree this, this is a terrible development. I mean, this is a scenario for Turks in Germany. You know, it's our failure that's triggered it, that we, the failure of legalization, but that kind of, you know, a community apart looking to another government for the indefinite future, that's just the worst possible scenario. What, 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 what's the talk about? Okay, that's fine. Uh, uh, that's the teacher's format, it's best. <laughs>